Hi, this is Barb, and today we're going to go over users and user groups. So, um, just a, for a little bit of explanation, every individual who uses or is notified by the system is considered a user. Okay, and then a user group is a collection of users who share the same permissions. And every user has to belong to a user group. So where we go to, to um, maintain any of that is on our administration page and about halfway down on the left tier column are our users. So if I click on the users it gives me a list of all the users that we have in our portal and right below it is our user groups. Okay, so we have um, several different user groups set up. You can see here the names of all of them and um, I can just show you a little bit about what what they do. So administrators we have and you can see over here under the number of users it tells us how many users are set up in each user group. So you can tell that we don't have anyone with um, and under our demo or under our DEX or you know so we have different you don't have to have a user to have that user group things can change but every user has to be in a user group so for example our administrators user group um, this is the title of it that we give or you know when we give you the system and you get a brand new user administrators is um, sort of a generic one that comes with the system uh, you can put a description in um, this will tell you the current members and you can assign other members from here which would move them out of their current user group or you can also do it from the user page but this is kind of the important thing down here is the actual permissions so you can see within our administrators they can do everything so um, you can see though also by the checkboxes that you have the ability to define exactly what a person within this user group can do. The manage permissions, this button here if it's unchecked that would not allow the person to make any changes in the system. They couldn't edit vehicle information, they couldn't um, change other people's passwords, they wouldn't be able to set up new users or user groups or anything like that. So that's kind of the big one right there. And then if you are running departments as well, then you would distinguish which departments this user group applied to. Okay, so I'll go back to the user groups page and just show you another one. Um, let's, for example, use our demo. You can see, as I said, we don't have any current members and they don't have permission to use the data exchange access. Okay, uh, if we go back again and pick out, say, maybe the dispatchers, um, you can see the dispatchers are able to locate track and use the map view, and they're also allowed to use the dispatch and dispatch vehicles. So again, you can use any combination of this when you set up your user group. You know, for example, you could have managers who just run reports. They don't need to do anything else. They just need to be pulling historical data and maybe a mechanic who just needs maintenance you could set up a, a user to be able to do that so it gives you a lot of freedom and a lot of um, ability to just manage what a person can do and then for users um, you can as well not only you know put them in a user group which defines their permissions you're also able to um, set up a user who doesn't actually have the ability to log into the system and that's what this little um, lock means right here if you put your mouse over it'll tell you this user is now allowed to log in also if you won't have a user who's not going to be used ever as a contact for any notifications or sending emails to reports then you wouldn't use them as a contact and that's what the little person here that this person is, you know, this user is available as a contact, this one is not. So that sort of gives you an idea of what that does. In order to set up a new user, we just simply click on new user and, 
enter their name. And a description, you can put something in here. It's not a mandatory field, so you can put something like, uh, say, they're a driver or a manager or something like that. Then you define what user group they're in, and I can choose anything. I can choose our Nero users. I can leave this open. If they're not going to be able to log into the system, I just uncheck it. And then it just gives me no options at all. I don't have to enter a username and password because they're not going to use them. If that is checked, then we enter a username. And then we enter a password. And you can set anything up when you set the user because the, the user can then go in and change it after that. enter the email address. The passcode is just something that if they call into this to Nero, um, then we can identify who they are by a passcode. Um, don't use it all that often, but it is there for, for that kind of purpose. Then if you are using the dispatch and have the Garmin's, um, if this person is going to be a dispatch driver, then this is where you would click in order to be able to set up their driver ID. So when you click the box, it you know, asks for confirmation. I say OK. And then it gives me a field to enter the driver ID. And that can be like a name or it could just be a number, whatever, whatever you need. Like if they're you know, driver 528 or whatever that way. You also have the ability to upload a photo of the driver if you wanted to do that as well. On the bottom part down here of the users, this is where you define whether this person is going to be available as a contact. So are we going to send um, scheduled reports? Are we going to, uh, you know, are we going to be able to email them if, you know, a scenario is outside the exception, like a speeding report or an idle alert or something like that. So if they're going to be used for anything like that, we click this button. You have to enter a phone number. It doesn't need to be a mobile number. It could be the business number. But um, enter that in there. And then the, the email address comes from automatically fills in number one. If they have more than one email address where they would want to receive things, you can simply enter another one in here as well. Okay, and it gives you the ability to enter some details, some notes, and, you know, relationship to the company, maybe job title or something like that to just help you store perhaps extra details about the user in your system. And once you're done that, you would just click Save. And once you click Save, then the new user would show up and be available in the system here. So just really simple to set a new user. You click New User. To create a new user group, same basic thing. You just click New User Group, uh, enter the name of it, describe it. Um, so it could be, you know, just the drivers or, uh, you know, the maintenance department or the service department. Every user group has a parent user group, um, simply thought of as, you know, like if you think of a parent-child relationship, the parent needs to have more authority than the child. So it just has to be a user group that has more permissions. Again, you can add the people into the user groups over here or on when you have them as a user from the user page, you can add them. And then you define what permissions right in here. So if this one is just able to run reports, I would just save it right there. If they're going to be able to run reports and locate, then, you know, then I could save it. So it really gives you the ability to be really specific at what a, a person is allowed to do. The trigger outputs, this allows the person to do things like use the door unlock feature, which is an output. Um, you know, it's sending information from the system to the vehicle or such. And so like a door unlock is a, an example. 
Okay, and then again, if you're running departments, then you would define which department this applies to. And then just save it. And then it would add it to the list of user groups that you already have. And at any time, you can delete one if you no longer need it, just by simply checking in the box and clicking Delete. And there we go. If it has child groups, you can't um, remove. So, and like I said, we use this a lot for demos, so, but um, they would just remove it from the system if it didn't have. But again, you can't really go wrong because it gives you notes if, if something is outside of what it's allowed to do. So that's just a basic understanding of what users and user groups are. So thank you for joining us today.